Hi guys, this is Ross McCullough for BoohooBoxing.com. Angelo, what the heck is BoohooBoxing.com? Boohoo Boxing to me is going to be a new, a new kid around the block that wants to do the right thing for boxing, and I'm all for it because we got to get these young kids, give them a spot, give them the, so they can fight. Because Boohoo Boxing is going to create places for them to fight, for the teachers to teach them how to be fighters. It takes time now, and we're going to get involved with the amateur boxing too because they're the foundation of the professional boxing. Without amateur boxing, we don't have no profession. Oh, absolutely. You know, I think we've got a great organization that's up and coming. We're doing some stuff in conjunction with the union and JAB, which is the Joint Association of Boxers. We've had those conversations with Do Joe Diaz, with Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. I think we've got some great things to look forward to. You realize a fighter's not a fighter without a jab, so we're in with the jab. We're, we're, I like that. Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the great things is you also have an upcoming series that you're doing with Boohoo Boxing. It's a seven part series that really kind of walks through a chronological order of not just boxing as a profession, but your profession in boxing. Uh, that's just something incredible to look forward to. You know, tell me a little bit about what we're going to get a taste of. You know, we, we've talked about, uh, you know, the World War II era. We've talked about the 60s. You know, you were in Miami during that time there. Malcolm X, some, something like that. Well, I think I think we had a little fight going on, too. Uh, Cassius Clay was fighting Sonny Liston, the baddest man on the planet. You know, and, and all of a sudden, uh, a couple of weeks before the fight, the promoters tell me that your kid's saying that he's a Muslim. We want him to say he's not a Muslim. So uh, Muhammad came to the office for a meeting with uh, the promoter. My brother was working with the promoter. And he said, come back to your office. They went in another room and he came back and said, Lange, I don't think it's going to be a fight. I said, why? He said, well, they want me to say I'm not a Muslim. I'm a Muslim. So well, you do what you got to do, son. That's life. And that was the exact conversation. So uh, later on, uh, Muhammad's in the gym working out. He, he states he's a Muslim, right? So I'm in the gym, and up pops a face that I recognize. It, it was Malcolm X. I recognized it because I'd been to L.A., and his picture was in the paper. Right. So I got a hold of Muhammad's brother, Rudy, then, who was Rockman later. I said, Rudy, tell the guy to leave. There's two newspaper guys here. I don't want Pat Putnam was there and another newspaper guy, because I don't want to get no bad publicity. So he said, you tell him. I said, no, he ain't going to tell him nothing. So that's the only time I ever saw Malcolm X. I never saw Malcolm X. You know, and later on after the fight, I got to be, meet Herbert Muhammad. The Louisville group was very aggressive. He took over his management. No big deal. And a uh, funny bit happened to me. I was, uh, the guy that would come in the gym with him was Sam. So I'm talking to the guy, Sam. I said, Sam. How the heck am I going to rhyme Muhammad Ali? The, to me, the, the Master's, Master's Clay, the most beautiful fighter in the world. How the heck am I going to rhyme him? And he's laughing, laughing. So about the third day with the same rhetoric going on and everything else, three, two guys pop up with the black suit. Captain Sam, he was a captain in the Muslims. I didn't know this. I knew him as a nice guy, he was a pretty fine guy. So I never, two things I learned in life. Never mess around with a fighter's personal life or his religion. You can't win. Two cases in point. Guy comes to the gym, he said, that wife of mine, boy, she's terrible. So I said, son, you know how women are? He went and told his wife that I said he was right. You know what? I lost a fighter and I lost the respect of the woman. Religion I learned way back with Woody Pastrano, fought Chick Calderwood in Scotland. I go to take a picture with a Catholic priest, took put my arm it was a Protestant area. Willie Pastrana couldn't win that fight with a gun. Forget about it. So you never get involved with that stuff. And that's my, that's my creative. I believe in that. It's none of your business. All you're worried about is your fighter. And I never went, when Muhammad would go into Overtown, I never went there. Why? I went there once for his birthday. I gave him a cake. Big deal. But I never get involved with those two things. You can't win. All I do is stick to the boxing. I work with the fighter as a fighter, period. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you find commentation like this interesting, if you want to know more about fame trainer Angelo Dundee, you're going to have to watch our seven part series, which we're calling the good guys, the bad guys, and sometimes the wise guys. And you're only going to see it on boohooboxing.com. Angelo, we look forward to being able to watch this. I know our fans are. Thanks so much for taking the time. Seven's a good number, Ross. Seven eleven. I do, I do, I do, I do card playing too. I'm good for poker tournaments. I love it. I exactly. Love poker. I love poker. Well, boohooboxing.com. This is where you can see the series or play poker with Angelo Dundee. Once again, I'm Ross McCullough with Fame Trainer Angelo Dundee. You're gonna have to tune into our website because you're only gonna see the series there. Thanks a lot, guys.